thank you all for coming. Uh, I'm Jeroen Dalsen. I'm from the Netherlands. I'm from a company called uh, Coltrick. Maybe you've heard of it. If you're on the L community, uh, you probably have. So uh, uh, I'm going to talk about the evolution of Profile Manager. Profile Manager is uh, the top uh, recommended plugin on the community of L. Um, so I'm going to uh, uh, let you uh, know how we developed a Profile Manager starting almost three years ago. Uh, we started a company, Coltrick, three and a half years ago, and the Profile Manager, or as we called it then, the Custom Profile Field Plugin was one of the first things we've done. Uh, and I'll uh, show you why. Uh, actually, it says here a 1.5. Uh, our company started uh, on Elk 1.2, but the Profile Manager, uh, the Custom Profile Field Plugin, um, was designed for 1.5. Uh, around summer 2009. Uh, why? Because uh, there was a very limited feature for managing fields on a profile, and a profile is one of the most important features in Elk uh, in any community. Uh, because uh, that's the main difference between uh, platforms as Joomla or WordPress. It doesn't, uh, doesn't go about content, it goes about profiles, users, and their relationships. Um, so this was the situation before Standard Elk 1.5. Uh, you could add fields, but then lose the default fields that were available. Uh, changing those uh, fields was not an option. You could uh, remove them all and start over again, and uh, losing all the data you have entered in, in those fields. Um, so this was our first version. Um, you could import default ELK fields, so uh, the data uh, entered before uh, uh, was still available after uh, enabling this plugin. Also, the custom fields with the stock feature of ELK could be imported. And uh, we add some JavaScript uh, features uh, so you can drag and drop, reorder the, the plugin fields. Uh, profile fields was also imported on the registration form, so we added an ability to uh, to show them on the registration form, and you can make them mandatory, so registration would uh, stop. Um, we also added a few uh, new fields, a uh, pull down field, radio options, um, some default things. Uh, then came 1.6, and uh, actually we didn't change much on Profile Manager for 1.6, because the code was very much 1.5, so uh, it's a version for our clients we skipped. Uh, but uh, uh, it's in this period that uh, 2.0, version 2.0 for Profile Manager uh, came out. Uh, as, before, as I said before, no specific change for 1.6 were needed. Uh, but we added some new uh, field types, like uh, a date picker, a pull down with multi-select options, uh, and uh, better internationalization. Uh, so uh, all the labels and the hints on the fields uh, uh, were translatable. And we made an adjustment so you have one single access control in L. You have the feature that you can uh, uh, allow a specific access for each specific field. Some uh, clients uh, thought that was a bit too much uh, moderation for the user. So uh, there's one single option now to control all your uh, fields at once. And uh, we made all fields searchable by uh, allowing them to output as tags and. Uh, below the surface, uh, they were added to the search engine for L. That um, was a very nice feature, but that changed uh, when uh, 1.7 came out. Um, they changed the way registration for searchable fields were uh, done. So it was a, a bit of a nasty change, but uh, in the end, it, uh, it's better. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, Something uh, uh, which also is interesting, uh, we allowed the editing of a profile field. And the reason we did that was because we had a lot of clients uh, which had hooked up uh, uh, an external system uh, for editing uh, uh, personal information like an LDAP uh, directory, active directory, um, or another database, sometimes a, a help desk support uh, product. And uh, this way, that backend system will manage the, the content but it will show up on your profile, and therefore you have to disallow the editing. That's fast. Uh, 
Now I have to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking too slow. And we also added the option to have a mandatory profile icon on the uh, user's uh, registration form. So the looks changed a bit. Uh, and uh, we saw that the, the features for a user's profile were the almost exactly the same for a group. So we added the option to uh, have a specific group profile fields. Um, so we have to, you could configure that uh, also. So, so you additional fields. Either, store, either each store is a separate entity? Yeah, the field configuration is an entity, but the value uh, stored with the user or the group is made of that. Uh, it's an attribute, not really an attribute. Um, Version 4.0 was a very interesting version, still on uh, L1.5, 1.6. It added uh, profile types and categories, uh, not for groups, only for users. Uh, you were able to drag the uh, custom fields to the different categories and link categories to different profile types. Um, that way you could uh, create uh, an admin with specific fields or a user with specific fields or even a pro member with additional data. Uh, it didn't do anything about how those types were uh, assigned to users. They could choose them the, themselves at this moment, but that uh, could be uh, limited. So you can uh, uh, build a role management system or uh, accounting uh, management system that would uh, allow the changes for those uh, types. Um, Also on the front end, something changed. Uh, the display of the profile feeds was normally just a single list, an ordered list from all the fields uh, you have configured. But uh, once we had the categories, we could group them uh, in a list with some headers or uh, the accordion view uh, available when clicked. It will slide up and down. Uh, so there was. 1.7, great changes, also great changes for us because we had to redo a lot of code. Um, a lot about security, but this time uh, we changed it. As I said, uh, version 1.0 was the custom profile fields, but as the project grew, grew uh, only custom profile fields was just uh, yeah, very limited. So we renamed the plugin to the profile manager. And this was the longest running version with uh, almost 50 sub-releases until uh, 5.93, uh, one, one and a half year development. One of the great changes we did was introducing classes. We rewrote all our code so uh, the objects, the entities were extended with some specific profile field uh, classes. And that, will, uh, that would allow us to uh, e uh, reduce the amount of code because we had a lot of them, and the classes uh, reduced it a lot. Also, we introduced backup and restore facilities for uh, your complete configuration, excluding the types and categories. Uh, but for uh, complete profile fields configuration, it would be uh, uh, stored in a, uh, I believe it was CSV. Oh no, oh, no it's just a JSON document. Um, and uh, imported in a separate site or after you change something. Uh, also, we export to a, a CSV file. Um, you could use that export for anything. Uh, import it in another system for email management, for example, uh, or just a backup. Is that a description of the fields, or is that all the user data for all the users that you can export? You can export all the user data uh, uh, defined in profile managers, so all the available fields configured. Uh, are exportable. It also exports some additional account information, uh, just uh, such as the GUID or uh, uh, time created, time lost, last login. So you can uh, get can, uh, email mark for a specific target. Also, we added a member search feature. Um, regular search in Elk provided uh, a simple name search or tag search. But if you want to filter a combination of tag fields, 
uh, it wasn't possible with uh, this version. If it, it was, uh, you can configure each field to be available on the search form, so you can uh, uh, very narrow the search results, and it updated the uh, live. When you change something here, the results show up here. No reloading. And we added a system category to the profile fields just for admins, so they can uh, uh, see some extra features, um, the email name, username, when last logged in, etc. Just for debugging or site administration purposes. Uh, 6.0, very interesting uh, release uh, because it uh, focused more on the back end of Profile Manager. Uh, we did some river update cleanups uh, because every time you change your profile, it sends an event to the river, the mainstream of Elk. Uh, and uh, uh, if you do that three times uh, in a row, it will update three times in a row. So we have three notifications on the river. Uh, we reduce those notifications uh, to just a single one per day. So that saves a lot of uh, updates on your uh, home screen. Um, also, we updated the registration form. We had some changes. You could add some custom text to it, uh, position the fields left or right. Uh, it also uh, validates the form uh, uh, on the client side with some JavaScript. Um, and we added an option to uh, register and log in by email, so there is no username. Uh, performance in this version was also a main, uh, uh, main issue. Uh, and performance increased, we could uh, reset with uh, better programming logic, doing the things in the right order or at the right moment. Um, but also by preloading uh, configurations of the profile fields, uh, because uh, each profile field, each configuration had about 10 to 15 options. And uh, um, in L, they were all single queries to retrieve the, the configuration option. Uh, we offloaded that to a single query, uh, retrieving all configuration options at once. And we also did that for the uh, user metadata, uh, as I said, for the objects, uh, for the configuration. It was a single query per field that also applies to the user. Um, so <laughs> Count them. <laughs> So that saves a lot of time and uh, uh, a lot of resources, especially query-wise. Uh, our opinion was queries is not also the problem, but mainly uh, the engine, the Elk engine, it built those queries. Did you do that with a custom query, or were you still using part of Elk's API? Uh, I don't know exactly, but I think we used the API because uh, it was still possible using the API to fetch a lot of data at once. Um, but uh, the API can also be extended with some custom wares and select, so that's no problem. It was not never a full uh, query. That's our philosophy. Uh, because uh, it's one of the main benefits of Elk. You, have, you don't have to know any query language to be able to program for Elk. Um, 1.8. I don't know which person was the main uh, contributor to that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, uh, that changed a lot for us. Uh, uh, 1.7 was mainly a back end change, 1.8 uh, mainly a front end change. Uh, building onto the better back end of 1.7. Um, and uh, the great change for us were that the back end, the admin end, uh, side, um, was separate from the user. So uh, J uh, JavaScript, CSS, all those code was uh, also needed in the front end before 1.8, but now only is registered for the admin side. Um, so we have to split, we had to split all our code into this is for the front, this is for the back. Uh, but it made it a lot clearer and a lot of, uh, reduced the load for the user in downloading all the CSS and the JavaScript. Um, also, uh, a really nice sprite image uh, uh, arrived in uh, 1.8, providing a lot of icons uh, we could uh, reuse. 
also saving uh, download sizes. So that, uh, that was great. Um, a live boxing uh, system, maybe uh, because we asked for it, uh, was introduced. The live box, uh, something we used before, um, and uh, uh, we like to use it uh, still, uh, was introduced. Uh, all ad forms were uh, mainly inline forms, and with the light box feature, it's a, a pop-up. Um, so that was uh, really cool. Um, in uh, 1.8, a lot of uh, code was deprecated in L-Core, so we have to uh, look through all our code, remove the deprecated functions, uh, but uh, luckily we get the notifications if we uh, skip one. So, uh, um, and uh, a small, but a significant change for us, uh, I will come to that uh, on the profile uh, page. Um, so this is now uh, the look and feel uh, for Profile Manager on the back end. Uh, there's no right uh, column, you can drag it up. Uh, and the add buttons, uh, they will uh, pop up this form, adding uh, a new profile field with the options. Uh, if you uh, forgot one, you can always click on a single uh, bullets uh, to change them. Um, and this is the profile field. A little bit changed in the layout, but uh, one of the important things is uh, uh, in Elk, the code had separated the profile fields uh, view. Elk work with, works with the uh, code snippets, I like to call them, and uh, they can be replaced or extended. Uh, normally we would have extended this view and did a really nasty trick with JavaScript to replace the original fields with the, our custom fields because we were against overriding the complete view. Um, but in uh, 1.8 uh, there came the option to just override this part of the profile form, a profile uh, view. So that was great. Saves us a lot of uh, coding. And, uh, uh, is also better for the users. That was uh, my talk about the evolution uh, of Profile Manager. So thanks for watching. And uh, uh, if there are any questions, uh, I would be happy to answer them. Do you have plans to use the, the sticky forms uh, feature for 1.8 in any of the? It might already be there. I haven't checked the latest. It's uh, it's on the uh, registration form and on the edit form by default. It's also available. So just using uh, the core standards. So, so my mind it makes it possible to for like in social network members also to change it or only for admins kind of uh, prototype? Yeah. The prototype it's a plug-in setting. Yeah. Uh, if users are allowed to change right. it um, or if uh, the admins only uh, are allowed to change it. So uh, you made it both. Yeah. Did you get like uh, notifications before the Elk team release a new version telling you the APIs have changed, what kind of, did they because, give you a heads up or kind of can tell you what is coming? So yeah, they done. do. Uh, uh, <laughs> they have a beta schedule. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a schedule, but they have a beta <laughs> releases before the, <laughs> before the main release. We have a plan. Uh, Exactly, uh, but uh, even before that, uh, there's also the code that's online, you can look at it. Uh, and sometimes, uh, in case of program manager, you get some uh, a special heads up first, because uh, 1.8 didn't change a lot. It, it did change almost nothing on the stock uh, editing of profile fields. I think mainly because program manager existed. Uh, but it was uh, uh, yeah, a problem for us. 1.8 was released and uh, uh, then everyone who used Profile Manager came on to us asking, when are you migrating? Yeah, yeah. Relax, relax. We <laughs> <laughs> yeah, will do it, but uh, it was a lot of time because uh, a lot of ch uh, things are changed and Profile Manager is becoming a very big plugin. So uh, uh, it was some work, but uh, because we got the job done. They don't get to see your code, right? So it's hard for them to know what changes they're making would affect you. Uh, they get to change our code. Uh, uh, everything uh, uploaded on uh, community.elk.org uh, is shared. Um, they can download it. And uh, also our code, most of our plugins is uh, available on GitHub. Uh, so they're viewing. Uh,
I'll, 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 show that. I'll, I'll add to your comments there. Um, so all of the code for the developers who upload plugins to the community site is, are available to us, but there aren't a lot of us. There's a lot of plugins. <laughs> so, uh, what, what I did as part of the 1.8 release was to take some popular plugins, try them on 1.8, see what was breaking, and see if there are things in the 1.8 process that I could change so that they wouldn't break as badly. <laughs> um, so for example, on um, I made it easier for the profile manager to work by adding a view that they could override rather than having to do whatever you did before. So there are small little things, and, and but I can make that more ex explicit too, right? So um, as developers, as you're writing your plugins and you find things that are painful, that's why we have a bug tracker too. So that, I mean, um, Jerome put on there like, I need a light box. It'd be great if Alec had a standard light box. And then 1.8, he got his light box. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so it's the kind of thing where um, all of the core developers are building plugin are building plugins for ourselves, but we're doing certain kinds of applications. We're not doing the broad applications that all of you are developing. And so if, if we're not getting that sort of feedback or uh, pull requests on GitHub, say here's this new feature I think Alex should have, and here's the code for it, um, then it's tough for us to know what we should be putting into the uh, new releases. So when you, so when you said you were able to replace just a section of an existing view, that wasn't a broad 1.8 feature where there's now, I mean, because we've been doing jQuery injection of, just put this in right here in the middle. That's not a generic thing in 1.8. It was just a specific for this one. Yes. Which, which yeah, the jQuery profile feature uh, was indeed a yeah, very specific change. Yeah, having these big, big core views broken into smaller chunks that we could Ex either extend to get them in the middle of the section or oh, completely override, that would be great for us. And they already did a lot of breakup, uh, but uh, sometimes as developers you uh, run into specific questions asking, like you said, to inject something just in between and uh, the core developers don't think of every possible feature. So uh, uh, yeah, if you run into something, uh, just uh, ask. Yeah. I'm just curious, has there been any discussion about integrating popular plugins like Profile Manager into the distribution of Eldra? Would that create even more problems with the new release? I guess that's a question. Go ahead and take that. I'm thinking about it all the time. You know, it'd be great to uh, have one of these guys contributing to Core instead of just, uh, you know, a plugin on the computer. And it seems like if, if something's the most recommended plugin on the community, it sounds like it's generally useful for people, right? Like something that it would be nice not to have to go to the community to look for it, just to come with it. So we haven't talked I mean, I, I specifically about this, um, but but it does come up. I mean, Tidy Picks is, a, is another one, right, where it's like, Everybody wants it, and it's like a photos plugin. What social network doesn't have photos on it? And it's but it's not in core, right? It's just on the community. So, um, yes, to your question. Uh, obviously, it hasn't happened yet. It is definitely. Uh, we also have to be careful because if we set a precedent, then everyone's going to kind of want. Oh, put mine in too, and. So we well, need to think about the criteria for what gets in and um, whether we can even handle it. I mean, like Cash said, is we're only you know like the well, core developers are only a few people, and so well, the more we take in, the harder it is. Well, to really keep they, they would still support it, but then that puts more pressure on you guys to update it with the right versions of at least right away. But then there's also kind of the, the Microsoft phenomenon. There's five different competitors in this defragmentation. Microsoft buys one of them, sticks it in, calls it core, and the entire marketplace dies. And yeah. as far as I can tell, Microsoft's done zero development on it since. Yeah. Not that our beloved core members would ever do that. <laughs> but I, I think it's, so it's this, this is a great plugin. We happen to not use it because we have our own one little problem 
um, I think it's good for it to be a plug-in personally and for somebody else to come up with a different one that's better or different. You know, maybe yeah. this one's very complex, and I think for a lot of the people probably sitting out there, they don't want a big complex thing. So maybe I, I kind of think it's good to have a simple one and a and an expert one. And uh, bloating the core uh, with, I mean, it, it's a great. I mean, I'm and looking at the the evolution. I'm like, oh dang, I, I wish I had that feet. Well, maybe I'll look at it again. You know. <laughs> So I think it's kind of good to have the, the two sides to the yeah. community. I think uh, the setup currently is, uh, is uh, pretty good. Uh, you can go full feature, adding every popular plugin to it, or going very minimal, uh, just being a platform, providing nothing else but the platform, and allowing uh, plugins uh, to be. And that's the other problem, that plugins are easily added to the platform. I think too the other thing might be just that um, not being part of the core means that Coltrick can update it whenever they want, right? It's not, maybe it being in core would actually slow down everyone's development and they can just continue to release bug fixes and improvement um, separate from, from core development. So. Yeah, because if we would like to add a new feature, we just do it. Right. If it's a part of core, uh, we have to fit in their schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have, to fit, they have to fit into your schedule too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, mixing those two up, uh, I don't think that's a uh, good uh, option. Or you guys could just become core developers. Yeah, we also thought about that. Two birds with one stone. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we had spare time. Well, at one point on becoming a core developer, I don't think becoming a core developer means that all you're doing is working on core. I think it's what we want to do is create a environment where people can be contributing to core just at a small level. And if you get enough people doing that, then you get an exponential increase in the amount of, of contributions to the, to the platform. Yeah. There's maybe also an ethical issue. Uh, we are developing only for Elk. It's our main goal to sell the product, build the plugin, sell the hours of work. And maybe that will conflict uh, with uh, the interest of an Elk community, of the Elk core. Um, uh, that could also be uh, something to consider, uh, adding commercial people. But when, I, I think there was initially a challenge with Elg. I don't know how long all of you have been in, in the in the community, but initially it was run by a, a commercial company, and I think there was always this uneasiness with having the commercial company drive the development of the tool. Right now, we like where we're at, where it's it's, it's a nonprofit that's running it, and we, we think that we can get as many commercial companies want to contribute as long as one is not dominating the core development. I think we think that's very healthy. Your plugin's still free, right? Um, okay. Yeah. Sure. So you just sell it probably customers as part of it. No, our uh, uh, business model is that we just reuse this plugin. Yeah. No, no additional uh, cost for the, for the new customers, but if they want to add new features, they will have to pay for the hours to add those new features. And the old customers just can upgrade to the new version of Profile Manager and reuse uh, new features without any cost. It's only the feature added that will, uh, will be charged. And uh, that, uh, that's the, for all our plugins, that's uh, all, always the case. And we have a lot of them. Just check us out on the community and uh, you will find uh, some of them. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Evan is up next.